What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about the recent statement from the World Health Organization that they're gonna be calcifying aspartame as possibly carcinogenic. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So I started getting a lot of messages from people freaking the f out over the announcement that the WHO will be listing aspartame as a possible carcinogen with the official announcement coming up on July 14th. And obviously this was picked up by a lot of news organizations and many social media influencers use this opportunity to say, aha, see, see, aspartame is carcinogenic. I did what I always do. I read the statement. I looked up the classification system from the WHO and I looked at the actual freaking research. So the first thing to point out is the WHO's classification system is in two tiers. So the World Health Organization classifies different compounds into three groups of carcinogenic. Group three are compounds that are basically thought to not be carcinogenic. And then you get into group two. Now group two is split into two different sections. You have group two B, which are possibly carcinogenic, which is where the WHO is putting aspartame. You have group 2A, which are probably carcinogenic. Then you have group 1, which are compounds that are basically known to be carcinogenic. This sounds very, very scary. However, let me just point out a few things that are in the same group as aspartame. Gasoline, engine exhaust, so this is just exposure to these things, dry cleaning, smartphones, Golden seal root powder, which is sold as a supplement and promoted as a treatment for respiratory illnesses and GI disorders, so some of you guys are buying this. Pickled vegetables, baby powder, caffeic acid, which is found in coffee, wine, and tea, acid aldehyde, which is what alcohol is converted to in the body, kava extract, and ginkgo biloba extract. I know many of you consume or are exposed to those substances and you're not freaking the f out over those. So I don't know why you're freaking the f out over aspartame. Then if we look at group 2A, some of the things in there which are thought to be probably carcinogenic, we see red meat and drinking very hot beverages like above 65 degrees Celsius. So many of these fitness influencers are hypocrites because many of them fall in kind of the low carb category where they say, you know, the idea that red meat is carcinogenic is complete BS, it's all nonsense, it's all trash epidemiology. But then when this comes out that aspartame is getting categorized in a category below red meat, they're like, aha, see, aspartame is carcinogenic. So where was your outrage over red meat? It's a textbook example of only focusing on the narrative that they want, cherry picking for that, while completely ignoring other data. Now, do I think red meat is carcinogenic? No, I do not, as long as you're not overcooking it and as long as you're not consuming high amounts of processed meat. The association between unprocessed red meat and cancer is very tenuous at best, and I'm not convinced at all that it's a causative effect. But that's neither here nor there. I just love many of these same fitness influencers who are jumping all over this about aspartame also were denouncing the World Health Organization's stance on the pandemic and vaccines. So you say that the World Health Organization is not credible because of their stance on vaccines and the pandemic, but as soon as they list aspartame as a possible carcinogen, now, apparently they become credible. Once again, a textbook example of hypocrisy from fitness influencers. Let's talk about what the data actually says. Are there human studies showing possible links between aspartame and cancer? Yes, you can find studies that show a link between aspartame and cancer. However, it is not a consistent effect in the literature. In fact, there were two recent studies that just came out showing no link between aspartame and cancer. And furthermore, the studies that do show a link between aspartame and cancer, such as the Nutrisante cohort, it's a very small effect in terms of relative effect. So for example, it's like a 
odds ratio of 1.15, meaning that there's a relative increase in the odds of getting cancer by 15%. Now, that sounds scary, but when you consider it's relative, so if your absolute risk of getting cancer is 5% and you have a 15% increase in risk, it doesn't mean it goes from 5 to 20, it means it goes from 5 to 5.75%. It's an absolute increase of 0.75. And even that is really not backed up by the literature because one thing we know about carcinogens is dose tends to be important. So what you tend to see with things that are carcinogenic, like smoking, is the greater the dose, the greater the risk of developing cancer. What you see with aspartame is you don't get a dose response. In fact, when they compared in a recent study moderate consumption of aspartame and high consumption of aspartame, they actually saw the risk slightly decrease when they went to the high consumers. How does that actually make any sense if this is a truly carcinogenic compound? And the answer is it doesn't and it's probably because aspartame is not really a carcinogen. When you're looking at epidemiology, what you're seeing is confounding variables coming together. When you have epidemiology, people who do one thing don't just do that one thing, they're also more likely to do other things. In fact, we know for sure that people who intake more aspartame and other artificial sweeteners are more likely to be overweight or obese. Not because aspartame causes that, because we know in randomized control trials, when people drink artificially sweetened beverages compared to regularly sweetened beverages, we see significant weight loss. It's one of the best weight loss tools we have. But because people who are overweight or obese are more likely to attempt weight loss and thus more likely to use some of these diet beverages. So if people who consume more artificial sweeteners are more likely to be overweight or obese, what you're probably seeing is people have a higher risk of cancer due to that rather than the actual artificial sweeteners they're consuming. And if we look at the relative odds ratios, the risk of being obese increases your risk of cancer several fold, like two to three fold increase in risk. Okay, so you go from like 5% to like 10 or 15%. Okay, that is a huge magnitude of difference. So let's say even if aspartame was carcinogenic, and the data suggests it's probably not, even if it was, if consuming aspartame allowed you to get off regular soda and lose significant amounts of body weight and body fat, it's still better than being obese. So many people will say, oh, these diet sodas are actually worse for you than regular soda. No, they're not. Not by a long shot. I know people will misinterpret what I'm saying. I am not saying you should consume aspartame. I'm not saying that aspartame is necessarily healthy for you. What I'm saying is on balance, the data do not suggest that aspartame is carcinogenic. And the list that it's on is basically filled with things that are probably not carcinogenic, but if they have any kind of link at all to cancer, they just throw them on the list. This is more of out of an abundance of caution, which again, if you don't want to consume aspartame, you don't have to, but it is a useful tool for weight loss. And every time I do a video like this, people comment and say, all I did was switch from regular soda to diet soda and I lost 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds. I see them all the time. Can you really tell me that those people are worse off now health-wise than they were before. All right guys, that's it for this week. If you guys like the way I break down research and data, make sure you check out my research review reps. Every month we review five studies that are popular in fitness and nutrition. And we break them down in a way that is palatable and easy to understand for anyone, even if you don't have a science background. We tell you what the researchers tested, how they tested it, what they found, and what we think of the study and how it applies for you. So if you're interested in that, Click the link in the description and I'll catch you next week.